Control and Coordination Introduction As the complexity of the individuals, plants or animals increases, the different cells and organs become separated from each other by greater distance. Thus, it becomes necessary to have a system by which the different parts of the organisms can function as a single unit. This is possible only if the different parts can coordinate with each other and carry out a particular function. To carry out a simple function such as picking up an object from the ground, there has to be coordination of the eyes, hands, legs and the vertebral column. The eyes have to focus on the object. The hands have to pick it up and grasp it, the legs have to bend and so does the backbone. All these actions have to be coordinated in such a manner that they follow a particular sequence and the action is completed. A similar mechanism is also needed for internal functions of the body. The individuals also have to adjust to the changing conditions around them and vary their responses. At the same time, the internal conditions of the body should be maintained constant. This is called homeostasis. Homeostasis is derived from homeo meaning same and stasis meaning stand still. The internal conditions of the body are maintained at a constant by controlling the physiology of the organism. Just as in animals, plants also have to control and coordinate their various functions. Animals, nervous. In animals, such control and coordination are provided by nervous and muscular tissues. Touching a hot subject is an urgent and dangerous situation for us. We need to detect it and respond to it. All information from our environment is detected by the specialized tips of some nerve cells. These receptors are usually located in our sense organs such as the inner ear, the nose, the tongue and so on. So, gustatory receptors will detect taste while olfactory receptors will detect smell. This information acquired at the end of the dendritic tip of a nerve cell These chemicals cross the gap or synapse and start a similar electrical impulse in a dendrite of the next neuron. This is a general scheme of how nervous impulses travel in the body. A similar synapse finally allows delivery of such impulses from neurons to other cells such as muscles, cells or gland. It is thus no surprise that nervous tissue is made up of an organized network of nerve cells or neurons and is specialized for conducting information via electrical impulses from one part of the body to another. What happens in reflex actions? Reflex is a word we use very commonly when we talk about some sudden action in response to something in the environment. We say, I jumped out of the way of the bus reflexly or I pulled my hand back from the flame reflexly or I was so hungry my mouth started watering reflexly. Human Brain is reflex action the only function of the spinal cord? Obviously not, since we know that we are thinking beings. Spinal cord is made up of nerves which supply information to think about. Thinking involves more complex mechanisms and neural connections. These are concentrated in the brain, which is the main coordinating center of the body. The brain and spinal cord constitute the central nervous system. They receive information from all parts of the body and integrate it. This is the second way in which the nervous system communicates with the muscles. The communication between the central nervous system and the other parts of the body is facilitated by the peripheral nervous system consisting of cranial nerves arising from the brain and spinal nerves arising from the spinal cord. 
The brain thus allows us to think and take actions based on that thinking. The brain has three such major parts or regions, namely the forebrain, midbrain and hindbrain. The forebrain is the main thinking part of the brain. It has regions which receive sensory impulses from various receptors. Separate areas of the forebrain are specialized for hearing, smell, sight and so on. There are separate areas of association where this sensory information is interpreted by putting it together with information from other receptors as well as with information that is already stored in the brain. However, certain sensations are distinct from seeing or hearing. For example, how do we know that we have eaten enough? The sensation of feeling full is because of a center associated with hunger which is in a separate part of the forebrain. Study the labeled diagrams of the human brain. Coordination in plants Animals have a nervous system for controlling and coordinating the activities of the body. But plants have neither a nervous system nor muscles. So, how do they respond to stimuli? When we touch the leaves of a chewy mui, the sensitive or touch-me-not plant of the mimosa family, they begin to fold up and droop. When a seed germinates, the root goes down, the stem comes up into the air. What happens? Firstly, the leaves of the sensitive plant move very quickly in response to touch. There is no growth involved in this movement. On the other hand, the directional movement of a seedling is caused by growth. If it is prevented from growing, it will not show any movement. So plants show two different types of movement one dependent on growth and the other independent of growth. Immediate response to stimulus Let us think about the first kind of movement such as that of the sensitive plant. Since no growth is involved, the plant must actually move its leaves in response to touch. But there is no nervous tissue nor any muscle tissue. If we think about where exactly the plant is touched and what part of the plant actually moves, it is apparent that movement happens at a point different from the point of touch. So information that a touch has occurred must be communicated. The plants also use electrical chemical means to convey this information from cell to cell. But unlike in animals, there is no specialized tissue in plants for the conduction of information. Finally, again as in animals, some cells must change shape in order for movement to happen. Movement due to growth Some plants like the pea plant climb up other plants or fences by means of tendrils. These tendrils are sensitive to touch. When they come in contact with any support, the part of the tendril in contact with the object does not grow as rapidly as the part of the tendril away from the object. This causes the tendril to circle around the object and thus cling to it. More commonly, plants respond to stimuli slowly by growing in a particular direction. Because this growth is directional, it appears as if the plant is moving. Environmental triggers such as light or gravity will change the directions that plant parts grow in. These directional or tropic movements can be either towards the stimulus or away from it. So, in two different kinds of phototropic movement, shoots respond by bending towards light while roots respond by bending away from it. Plants show tropism in response to other stimuli as well. 
The roots of a plant always grow downwards, while the shoots usually grow upwards and away from the earth. This upward and downward growth of shoots and roots, respectively in response to the pull of earth or gravity, is obviously geotropism. Hormones in animals How are such chemical or hormonal means of information transmission used in animals? What do some animals, for instance squirrels, experience when they are in a scary situation? Their bodies have to prepare for either fighting or running away. Both are very complicated activities that will use a great deal of energy in controlled ways. Many different tissue types will be used and their activities integrated together in these actions. However, the two alternate activities, fighting or running, are also quite different. So, here is a situation in which some common preparations can be usefully made in the body. These preparations should ideally make it easier to do either activity in the near future. If the body design in the squirrel relied only on electrical impulses via nerve cells, the range of tissues instructed to prepare for the coming activity would be limited. On the other hand, if a chemical signal were to be sent as well, it would reach all cells of the body and provide the wide-ranging changes needed. This is done in many animals, including human beings, using a hormone called adrenaline that is secreted from the adrenal glands. Look at the figure to locate these glands. Adrenaline is secreted directly into the blood and carried to different parts of the body. The target organs or the specific tissues on which it acts include the heart. As a result, the heart beats faster, resulting in supply of more oxygen to our muscles. The blood to the digestive system and skin is reduced due to contraction of muscles around small arteries in these organs. This diverts the blood to our skeletal muscles. The breathing rate also increases because of the contractions of the diaphragm and the rib muscles. All these responses together enable the animal body to be ready to deal with the situation. Such animal hormones are part of the endocrine system which constitutes a second way of control and coordination in our body. Remember that plants have hormones that control their directional growth. What functions do animal hormones perform? On the face of it, we cannot imagine their role in directional growth. We have never seen an animal growing more in one direction or the other depending on light or gravity. But if we think about it a bit more, it will become evident that even in animal bodies, growth happens in carefully controlled places. Plants will grow leaves in many places on the plant body, for example. But we do not grow fingers on our faces. The design of the body is carefully maintained even during the growth of children.